if you've been with our show, we started January 3rd, have been here very long, Teak and I, on Tiki and Tierney, but we wanted to, you know, find a pathway to incorporate some of the the former voices who will always, uh, you know, be part of the fabric here, obviously, the pioneers of this station, certainly in this time frame. Joe B. was on, Jody Mack was on, Russ was on, and now we get a little, uh, little double dose of both. He's the Mets guy, but he also, back in the day, and I did not remember this, Dove gave me the... Uh, the resume. Overnight updates he began for the schmooze. And then, <laughs> wow. And then eventually, this I remember, moved to middays with Francesa. And then eventually Dave Sims. And, of course, he's the beat man, the Mets reporter for the fan. And uh, everybody knows his voice and everybody loves him. Eddie C. What's up, Eddie? How are you today? Good, guys. Good, BT, Tiki. Good to see you guys. Likewise. Uh, congrats on, on the gig. And uh, you guys are sounding great there. Yeah, what Appreciate a way to you, break man. up to New York doing overnights with schmooze, huh? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, and it was every 15 minutes back then, right? You yeah, actually had yeah, to work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were just you hanging out. The same news, yeah, over and over again from two to four. Nothing, nothing changed. Oh uh, my just, goodness! Every minutes, yeah. And Eddie, I remember, and I'm sure a lot of uh, old time St. John's. You, you know, you did St. John's too with Gary Cohen for a long time. What was the last year you did St. John's? I think you know, if if memory serves me right, it was late '90s. I I think, uh, but I, I can't remember the exact year. BT, we did. Gary and I did about four years, I think, uh, yeah. together. And, well, a little jealous. Yeah, you yeah. had him when. Uh, I mean, trust me, I enjoyed doing the games, but uh, you know, you had him under a little more successful circumstances <laughs> than maybe me uh, and Mick have had. Too. <laughs> Although they had a good win last night. That was a good win last night for them. Look at you up to speed, yeah. going out to Xavier and I getting the you. win. All right, so we've got a lot to do. Um, you know, first of all, before we get into the Mets stuff and, and the lockout stuff, so you're doing the overnights with, with Schmooz. You go to the middays, and I think you were doing updates before you actually started doing a show with Francesa. Yeah. And, yeah. and before Francesa became Francesa, uh, in terms of the public persona and the money and the ratings and, and the star power, what was he like? What was it like working with Mike? <laughs> you know, it was it was fun. it was very interesting. You know, you could tell right away that Mike had a feel for the business. He obviously knew sports very well, but he didn't know the radio part of it. And that was my job to teach him the radio ins and outs and uh, breaks and that kind of stuff. And he picked it up uh, pretty quick. And I, I I do remember it was funny. We used to do. Uh, uh, some shows on the weekend. Mike and I did middays for a while before Mike and Chris started, I think the fall of 89, I think uh, was, was the afternoon show. And then Dave Sims and I did, did the middays for, for a couple of years, but uh, we used to do uh, uh, weekend football and basketball shows, uh, college football focus and college basketball beat 10 to okay. one on Saturday. Okay. And we were, we were walking out of the building in Astoria one day. And I, and I said to Mike, I said, you know, you, you're getting this. I said, you're, you you everything's getting down you're you're everything's coming together and you're starting to get the flow and the feel and everything i said <laughs> one thing to remember about this business don't let things go to your head and he said don't worry nothing's going to go to my head <laughs> <laughs> it'll never nope, happen never. it'll never happen but you know listen he had That's he had funny. a great one yeah. and, uh, he's the legend nice absolutely he is. Know, no he's, doubt he's the man. so he you were you were han solo you were han solo then back back then to luke right yeah. don't get cocky kid <laughs> <laughs> when he, when he yeah. in the Millennium Falcon. Exactly. Hey, you know, Ed, I know you did Dave Sims. You were Dave Sims on the Midday, and it was called Coleman and the Soul Man, right? right. right? What a great name. Probably, which probably didn't fly then and certainly wouldn't fly now. That's I know. Just, that's, that, why, that's why I ask it. It's like crazy to like think about that. But well, that's not that was bad. He, was, no, back then it was probably came, fantastic. Was he the first black full-time host on the fan Yes, I believe. Yeah, I think uh, I, I believe he was, you know, that that moniker actually came from Imus and uh, and nobody at that point in time, nobody wanted to tell Imus that's not a good idea. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's, that, that's really not going <laughs> well, to. Well, <laughs> the reason I ask, I mean, Dave's now with the Mariners, right? He does the, the play by play with the Mariners. Um, no, did he mind it? Like, did he care or was he OK with it? Uh, you know, I, I think he kind of sloughed it off. I don't think he loved it. Neither did yeah. I, for that matter. I mean, I, I, I didn't really want to do it either, but, yeah. uh, you know, and, and we downplayed it. We didn't really use yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Uh, but did he, did he like it? No, I wouldn't say that, uh, that Dave loved it. That's by the, sure. Yeah. By the way, I still see Dave doing St. John's, doing, uh, not just St. John's, yeah. but doing Biggie stuff. FS1. He's a good guy. So we're talking to Eddie I Coleman, of course. Eddie. Yep. Eddie's on the fan here with Tiki and Tierney. All right, the Matt Harvey stuff. You're around the team. You're, you know, before the game, after the game. You have a sense of what's going on. Um, you know, where were you um, in, at least in your own mind, maybe evaluating uh, his his off the field issues if you if you picked up on it? And what was your reaction the other night 
with Terry Collins being so uh, so forthright and, and really airing everything out on, on TV. Yeah, Terry took a lot of hits for that, I, I know. But that's Terry, you know. I mean, that, uh, Terry, he doesn't pull any punches, uh, you know, and a lot of people took offense to that, that, you know, they felt he kind of threw him under the bus, uh, revealing private information. But uh, that's, you know, that's Terry. I don't think Terry had a, any mean-spiritedness about him mm -hmm. uh, in doing so. But, you know, he he may have hurt the cause in some respect. Uh, with, with Harvey, you know, it, it wasn't hard to stretch the imagination that uh, that he was burning the candle at both ends. I, I mean, it's, you know, it, it became obvious, you know, when he started missing games, obviously. But you can look at Matt sometimes coming in, uh, you know, day after a game that he pitched and you know he probably didn't look 100 percent. that's for sure you don't necessarily have to be if you're a starting pitcher the next day but you got to get your work in and i'm not sure that the work was always getting done let's put it that way yeah yeah, yeah. Did, you, did the mets ever try to do anything to help him you know because i know that it's the, like the narrative is that they didn't but right. it, I, I think they had to have right because if you saw yeah. it and, well, and teammates like they had to try to do something right I, I know I know Terry talked to him. I know his teammates talked to him as well. I know David Wright had a long sit down with him as well. And uh, I, I do know, I think at one point, you know, David kind of felt that he wasn't getting through and he kind of said, hey, you know, I've done what I can. Mm -hmm. That's it. I've done, I've, I've done everything I can. I'm the captain here. And and, uh, you know, he's, he's going to have to straighten himself out. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, eventually he didn't. Uh, I, one thing about Harvey, though, I will say, and, and people do tend to forget this, you know, this and there was a lot of controversy in 2015. I remember being down in Florida when he said, well, you know, I'm going to pull back because uh, at that point, Boris wanted him to pull back and watch his innings limits and that. Yeah, but, remember you know, well, he, yeah. He threw, it, he threw it aside, you know, he threw it aside. And, and I think that hurt him later on as well. But in 2015, uh, he gave them a lot of innings in the postseason when this is coming off Tommy John surgery. So did it hurt? I have hurt him in the long run. So, I, I you know, when people want to die, you know, uh, knock him down at this point in time. And a lot of people do. I think people have to remember that too, that yep. he, uh, he gave what he had that year. That I, I year. agree. Uh, it's a big part of the equation, no doubt. You go into your skipper's office and say, the hell with the innings limit, give me the baseball, it's time to go. You got to yeah. you gotta respect that. So, I mean, the thing about the bloody nose, though, it's one thing to surmise, all right, guy's out late, he looks tired, he smells like booze, whatever, he's not running his poles, he's kind of half-assing it in the dugout, he looks like he's hungover. But to have that disturbing visual, not once, but twice, I mean, I, I know 2015 and, and, and now cocaine is, is less prevalent. Uh, and I, I've heard Keith talk about it in the past. Like, he saw signs with Doc like, man, you can look at his eyes and, and, and Keith was able to kind of deduce, all right, this guy might be messing around with the wrong stuff because Keith had his, his experiences with that. But in the mid-2010s, cocaine's not flying around. So maybe there just weren't a lot of people who knew the signs of cocaine. But when you see a bloody nose, yeah. uh, what else do you need? That was pretty obvious. I, I think that was the first thing that came to my mind when I saw that image, you know, on the mound during the game, uh, you know, I, I, and I will say this, and I don't know this, I never talked to Matt about it, but uh, did, did he have a huge problem with it? I don't know. My, my sense was always that he was kind of a page six guy. He liked going, he liked the New York nightlife. He mm -hmm. liked going out. Uh, it was part of that, you know, occasionally dabbling in cocaine. Yeah, obviously it was. Yeah, he said uh, it was. Yeah. Know, yeah, did he have a serious problem with it? I don't know. I I, I can't answer that, and only he can. Uh, maybe he will someday. But uh, you know that that was my sense that uh, it was there for him. He did it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, certainly didn't help him. That's for sure. I got you. So we're talking to Eddie C. Eddie Coleman, Mets reporter, with us here on the Fan Tiki and Tierney. Eddie, let's move this forward because the the Steve Cohen era is is here, and it feels like yeah. it, the I don't know the the energy, the excitement, the anticipation is 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 is, is it's amazing, right? Um, can you put it in the words, what it feels like from your perspective with this new regime with the Mets? Well, listen, I, I think Mets fans feel like they've gotten a rebirth uh, with Steve Cohen. They've operated so long under the Wilpon regime, and they kind of knew what they had. If they were bidding on a free agent or they wanted to bring somebody aboard, there was a limit to which mm -hmm. they could go. There's no limit now with Steve Cohen. I, I find it very interesting, and I find this whole scenario, uh, guys, very interesting with Steve Cohen right now, what's going on in baseball, because, 
you know, he's got all the money in the world. I think we know that he's got the most money of anybody in baseball and probably more money than anybody yeah, in any most, sport. most people in any sport. But, right. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, you know, he, when he came in last year, he, he, he sort of glided in, you know, he, he didn't want to, you know, upset the apple cart. He didn't want to upset the other owners. And I think that that showed in, in the way he went about things, there were things that he probably wanted to do and didn't do simply because he didn't want to make that big splash. Now this year, you know, all bets are off. I mean, he's gone out, he spent a ton of money when this thing is resolved, he's going to spend more, but now in the midst of trying to get this thing resolved, he's an owner. All right. yeah. he, he's he's got to figure this out on the owner's side as well. And he's got to look down the line and what it's going to maybe cost him in draft picks. If they don't come to a good compensation, uh, you know, collective bargaining tax agreement. So I, mm-hmm. it, it, I find it very fascinating that the, in, in a short amount of time, he's been embroiled in, in a lot of stuff here that, that is going to, uh, you know, shape baseball over the next decade or so. Eddie, in your mind, when do you hop in that of Port St. Lucie to get this thing going? Like, <laughs> when do you think you're going down there? That's, that's a great, we're usually it's right around now, uh, BT, you know, it's, uh, sometime after three or four days get underway and the, and the guys start coming in, uh, is when we usually get down there. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know. I listen, I keep saying, you know, today's a big day. So, or the next meeting is a big day. And I mm-hmm. thought the last one was, there hasn't been anything going on until today. This is what I think the the sixth meeting in ten weeks. You know, which boggles my mind that mm. uh, you can't sit down and and at least negotiate or, or try to negotiate anyway to get some uh, something going on this thing. But uh, if if it doesn't look good after today, then you're going to have to push. You're going to have to start pushing things back seriously. And oh, well, well, let me ask you this, Eddie. Oh, over yeah. under. Oh, and I'm with you. Today's big, just like Saturday was big, and that's why we were all yeah. ticked off when they left after 38 minutes. Over yeah. under. 130 games. Where would you put your money right now, knowing what you know? Hmm. Mm. I still think they want I, – I would still say over because I still think they want to get to as complete a season as they can. Will they get 162? I'm beginning to doubt that right now, but I still think that uh, they want to get as, as close to 162 as they can. What that means, I have no idea. 154, the old number, I don't know. Uh, but I, I would still go over 130 at this point uh, because I, I do think they're you know, at least beginning to feel the crunch from outside and that you know people don't want to put up with this stuff. They just don't. Yeah, it's true. So, uh, it's, and it's uh, – you know they've had enough, and and plus you you know listen we've talked you guys have talked about it a ton I'm sure too you had a tr- not not a good football season you had a tremendous football season I mean you really did and the playoffs were great and coming off that and going into this it's just uh, it's such a downer it's it's just a drag. Let me leave you, and uh, really you leave us, with uh, one of the feel-good, just you know the essence of sports radio, a debate thing, a bar debate. I'm going to throw this to you. And I was going to even cap it like the modern era, but I'm actually going to give you the chance to go back as far as you want. And I'm going to preface it with this. Assuming that DeGrom is healthy, and when he is, he's definitely the best pitcher in baseball. Nobody's disputing that. Uh, Assuming Scherzer is right, he's still top five, top six, easily. Mm -hmm. The one-two combo for the Mets on paper going into the season, in all of New York baseball, what Yankees, Mets, Giants, any era, right? Dodgers, obviously. What um, what other one-two combo can top that? Koufax uh, and Drysdale. Yeah, I I, I guess uh, maybe. You know, that- Maybe. Yeah, maybe. And, and Sandy was short too. Uh, yep. you know, uh, you know, and DeGrom has had uh, some problems, obviously came late. So it's a little bit different. Uh, Scherzer is, you know, kind of at the, toward the end of his career, but he's still got a lot in the tank as well. But I mean, you're right. It, it's right up there with, uh, you know, you know, I mean, you can, you, you can go back and, and have, you can go almost to any city or any, any team and pick out the one, two, but the Grom and Scherzer, I think are right there with just about anybody. I mean, you look at like, um, you know, a, a, a shilling, shilling Pedro. Yeah. There's very few instances, even like with New York baseball, you know, when the Yankees really got great and they won back to back in 77, 78 and Gidry was the man. Um, you know, okay, but was Gidry the best pitcher in baseball? No. Yeah. Uh, you look at the, the, great, the year. Yeah. great year, but not the best pitcher in baseball. Pettit was never the best pitcher in baseball. You know, we got Clemens while very good advanced stage. I, I don't know. I mean, Whitey, who was the second banana behind Whitey? Was mm-hmm. he as good as Scherzer? My answer would be no. I think you can make the case it might be. Could be. I mean, maybe hyperbole, hey, hey, but Ed, you allude, maybe the best ever. You alluded, you know, briefly um, that the you don't think Steve Cohen's done. Any target 
you know, top of mind or any you think would make sense? Well, I, they, they need another pitcher, uh, guys. And, and I listen to me, even if they got an, an innings guy, that's providing uh, that Carrasco and Walker are healthy and can go along yes. with the other two. If you get an innings guy, a veteran guy who's an innings guy, to me, that's that's good enough. Now, you can go out and, and get a real good guy, Oakland, Cincinnati. Oakland and Cincinnati, I think, will deal. I, I When this – when the dust settles and, and they, if they do get this, settled, I hope they do at some point uh, when they do get it settled and everything kind of unleashes, there are a lot of free agents out there. You know, you forget Michael Conforto. I mean, mm -hmm. where, where's Michael Conforto going? Uh, you know, guys like that. There are a ton of guys out there. Uh, where's Freddie Freeman going for that matter? Uh, but uh, you know, they, they, there are pitchers that can be had and there are deals that can be made. So you could go out and, and, you know, get a, say a, a guy who was a three that, could be your five. Let's put it that way. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. uh, I think the Mets, at the least, anyway, have to get an innings guy in there to make sure and bump the other guys down a little bit. Eddie, it's really nice to, uh, you know, we've bumped it over the years in the holes and, you know, here and there, but it's really nice to have you on the show. Uh, I know Mets fans love hearing from you. And uh, I was just thinking in my mind, like, I, I, I'm, I can't remember, certainly not trying to date you, but I, I can't remember a point where I don't remember okay, hearing Eddie on the radio. <laughs> yeah. I really don't, man. Yeah. So thanks for hopping on, buddy. Appreciate you. Eddie. Hey, any, anytime, guys. It's good to see that uh, the midday is in good hands with you guys, too. And uh, keep up the good work. Thanks, good talking sir. to you. Always. Likewise. You got it, pal. There he is. Eddie C in the house.